In the revelation presented to the Apostle John, Jesus pointed ahead many centuries to the time when Jehovah brings an end to those who oppose his kingdom. At Revelation 11 and verse 18, it speaks of such opposers as those ruining the earth. In the Bible, the word earth can have more than one meaning. First, let's look at the planet. Unlike the planets that have been named after false gods, Genesis chapter 1 tells us that Jehovah named this planet Earth. As for the false labeling of the other planets, we can be certain that those disgusting names will soon be gone. But as for the Earth, Jehovah leaves us in no doubt about its future. It was created to last forever. Just like the disgusting names of the false gods that humans have given to the literal planets, the false labeling of humankind and the immorality will not continue. For his own namesake and for those who love him, Jehovah will bring to ruin those ruining the earth. What is the earth that is being ruined today? As we have discussed, it is the planet and the people being corrupted by Satan's world. But what is the earth that will endure forever? First, the planet. As we have read, the scriptures are clear that it will last forever. Next and most important, the people, the new earth, those for whom Jesus died and who respond to the good news. The recreation is coming. Jesus will not waste a single day of the thousand years, not one day of it. We've just been watching a few clips from Kenneth Cook's talk, The Earth That Will Endure Forever, a talk that wasn't given at the 2022 annual meeting, but for some reason Jehovah's Witnesses want us to believe that this was part of the program. And this is just to give you the gist, essentially, of what Kenneth Cook's talk is about. He's talking about Revelation 11, verse 18. And you might be tempted to think that this is a new light talk. In other words, it's a talk where a governing body member is introducing a new understanding of Scripture. Because Revelation 11, verse 18, which talks about God bringing to ruin those ruining the earth, that was a favorite proof text that we used to use, I say we, that Jehovah's Witnesses used to use in the preaching work. They used to say, well, obviously we're living in the last days because look at this creepy verse in Revelation 11 verse 18 that talks about men ruining the earth. At what other point in history has it even been possible for mankind to ruin the earth. The Romans couldn't ruin the earth. People in the Bronze Age couldn't ruin the earth. But nowadays, man can actually ruin the earth. Therefore, it must have been talking about the times that we're now living in. I've done some digging on this. And actually, what Ken Cook has been saying here about the earth having not necessarily just a literal meaning regarding the planet Earth, but also a meaning regarding mankind. This isn't new. So you can actually find, going back a number of years, articles in the publications that talk about a dual meaning. So this whole reasoning about ruining the Earth being like a really unique, uh, almost uncanny verse pointing to the times that we're living in now, that's not or that hasn't been supported in the organization's publications for some time now, actually. So it's not like this is even a new light talk. Well, it isn't a new light talk. This is not a new understanding. But for some reason, Jehovah's Witnesses, or specifically the governing body, really, really wanted to get this talk out there about God bringing to ruin those ruining the earth, both literally and figuratively in terms of the inhabitants of the earth. 
you'll have seen Ken Cook allude to morality and the most obnoxious, grotesque part of his talk is to do with homosexuality and, as he puts it, blurring of the genders, which I will get to later in this rebuttal. That's the real... I'm not going to say highlight because there's nothing that's a highlight about it. That's the, the part of the talk that is, let's say, most noteworthy. But how odd for Ken Cook to be going on this bizarre rant about the names of the planets being disgusting. Genesis chapter 1 tells us that Jehovah named this planet Earth. As for the false labeling of the other planets, we can be certain that those disgusting names will soon be gone. Just like the disgusting names of the false gods that humans have given to the literal planets, the false labeling of humankind and the immorality will not continue. So Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, etc. These are all false labeling or disgusting names because they're based on false gods. This is information that's really, really important. So important that they've had to shoehorn it into a recent event at which this talk was not given. This is what people need to be hearing today, apparently. This is what God's channel with mankind, this is the wisdom that God's channel with mankind, his faithful and discreet slave, needs to impart. That the names of the planets are disgusting because they're based on false gods. And one day they will be gone. The names will be gone? I, I don't think it's as simple as that, to be honest. I think once something has a name, I mean, it's possible to call something by a different name or dead name or whatever. You can introduce as many names as you want. But once a name has been used and it's in people's memory, the name is still there. You can't just <laughs> erase it from history unless you're going to erase it from people's minds, which is, if you think about it, quite sinister. So I have problems with this whole idea of, of it just being gone or the names of the planets being gone. But what a weird hill to die on or, or what a weird problem to fixate over in, in such strong language. Because think about how this is going to be interpreted on an individual basis by Jehovah's Witnesses watching this material. Imagine you're a family watching this and imagine you're one of the kids and you're going to school learning about the names of the planets and now you're being told that these names are disgusting. So you might even feel guilty identifying in a school setting, if you're a Jehovah's Witness child or the child of a Jehovah's Witness, you might even feel guilty saying Jupiter or Saturn or Venus. You might feel guilty just using the correct names of the planets because they're suddenly now disgusting. 